All right, so we're going to start looking at the standard enthalpies of formation. And so first off, we need to know what the standard state means. And as you see here, it says the standard state refers to the standard thermodynamic conditions that are chosen for substances when listing or comparing thermodynamic data. Typically, this is one atmosphere of pressure and the specified temperature, which is usually, whoops, let me get this out of the way, sorry which is usually 25 degrees Celsius. So when you ever see something referred to as the standard state, you usually see a little degree symbol next to what you're talking about, whether it be delta H, or as we'll see in the future, delta S, delta G, etc. So for example, the standard enthalpy of reaction is delta H with a degree symbol there. And if you ever see that, that means that's the enthalpy change for a reaction in which the reactants are in their standard states and we we get products that are in their standard states meaning what state are they at one atmosphere pressure and 25 degrees celsius so water at one atmosphere pressure and 25 degrees celsius which is typical room temperature the standard state of water would be liquid standard state of oxygen would be a diatomic gas etc cetera, etc cetera. standard state of iron would be solid all right now, you also have to deal with sometimes an allotropic form, okay? Carbon, for example, carbon can be graphite, which is the normal um, allotropic form, the most common allotropic form of carbon. But we also know that carbon can be in the form of diamond if it's been under intense heat and pressure for an extended period of time, or even Buckminster fullerene. Fullerene, okay, buckyballs, which is 60 carbons rearranged into a soccer ball looking pattern. Okay, so what we end up having is something that's called the reference form. Okay, the reference form. So the reference form of an element is the most stable form both in state and allotrope. Okay, so again, the most stable form of oxygen is O2 gas. The most stable form of carbon is the graphite form. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You, you might hear that reference form, but again, that just means for an element, it's the most stable form in both state and allotrope. All right, now coming back here, what we want to look at now are these standard enthalpies or standard heats of formation. All right, and so what this is, this is the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of a substance in its standard state from its elements that are in, as we just talked about, their reference form and standard states. I know that looks like a lot, but again, Okay, if I want to know the delta H of formation for water, then I would have hydrogen gas because that's the most that's the reference form for hydrogen and it is a gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere pressure plus 1 half O2 gas again, reference form and standard state and that would yield H2O liquid and the delta H of formation which would be symbolized as delta H of formation with the little standard state symbol and that would equal negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole of water formed. Okay. So now these standard enthalpies of formation can be obtained directly, like if we can run this reaction under the standard conditions and get an answer in a calorimeter, or perhaps like for uh, tungsten carbide, which I mentioned in a previous video, it could be measured indirectly by using Hess's law to find the delta H of formation. Okay, these delta H's are listed in books and your ta in tables of reference on the internet, etc. So you can always find them very, very easily because this delta H's of formation of many, many substances are already been found and they're listed for us in a nice table setting. Now, as far as elements are concerned, 
our elements in their reference form and standard states and standard states have a delta h of formation of zero. Okay, and again, that's for elements such as the hydrogen gas here or oxygen gas. When we have the reference form of the elements, and if you again, you can look at these different tables and charts, and you would see that. They, they would have a delta H of formation of zero. And then perhaps you could see, like for example, carbon in the graphite form has the delta H of formation equal to zero, but carbon in the diamond form has a delta H of formation of 1.9 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that there's a, it, it tells you how much energy is required to go from the reference form to the non-reference form of an element. So what can we use these delta H's of formation for? Well, we have this wonderful equation that you can find the standard enthalpy change for a reaction using these standard enthalpy of formation. Okay, yes, we could do Hess's law and we can find a reaction that way. We could run a couple different reactions to add up to get our desired reaction, or we can simply use this thermodynamic data available to us and take the sum of the delta H's of formations of our products minus the sum of the delta H's formation of our reactants. So how does this look? Well, let's look at this example. Here we see nitrogen dioxide reacting with water to make nitric acid and nitrogen monoxide gas. So if I go to a table of, of references, a reference table, <laughs> then I would find these delta H of formations. Okay, and so again, the state of the substance is very important. Nitrogen dioxide gas is 33.1, and these are all kilojoules per mole. Liquid water, negative 285.8. Aqueous nitric acid, negative 207.4. Nitrogen monoxide gas, 90.3. So now what I have to do is take the sum of those for my products minus the reactants. But I have to also watch my balanced equation. So you have to watch the coefficients when we're doing this. So first up, my products there are two of the nitric acid, so I have two times the two, negative 207.4, plus my 90.3 for my nitrogen monoxide. Subtracting now, I do the sum of the reactants. I have three of the nitrogen dioxide, so that's why I have three times the 33.1, and then just one mole of water, so negative 285.8. And here's the other big thing is you just got to make sure you watch the negatives and positives while we're adding and subtracting. So that ends up being negative 324.5 minus negative 186.5. So you get the overall delta H for this reaction being negative 138 kilojoules. And again, if we were able to, we could run a calorimeter reaction and find the delta H that way. I could use Hess's law and add up a bunch of different reactions to get this reaction. Or now we can use the standard enthalpies of formation and use this lovely equation, and we were able to find the delta H. So it's another alternative. All three work. Not all three are possible all the time, especially the calorimetry ones or Hess's law. But this will always work as long as you are able to find the delta H of formations, or they're given to you. One more sample. Calculate the standard enthalpy change for this reaction where we have sodium hydroxide reacting with ammonium nitrate, both of them aqueous, and of course they're at 25 degrees Celsius, our standard temperature. So here you see the reaction, and I give you the delta H of formation. So take a moment, pause, and see if you can come up with the answer. All right, so hopefully you found the sum of the products, I've got one ammonia, 45.9, plus one water, plus one sodium nitrate. And then I've got one of each of my reactants, one sodium hydroxide and one ammonium nitrate. 
And so what I find overall, oops, sorry, overall I get 30.8 kilojoules for this delta H for this reaction. Now what's interesting, those are some big numbers, which isn't horrible as long as you have those available to you. But also, we would get the same answer if we look at what's really happening chemistry-wise, a.k.a. net ionic equation. Because technically, sodium is a spectator ion, nitrate is a spectator ion, and my reaction is basically hydroxide and ammonium reacting to make ammonia and water using those delta H of formations we'll get the same answer. Sum of my products minus the sum of my reactants. And yes, indeed, again, I would get 30.8 kilojoules. So that's another interesting fact, and we'll probably see this a lot more, especially when we're doing more thermochemistry, more thermodynamics, and the heats of neutralization, for example. All right, hope this helps, and I will see you soon.